Welcome everybody. This is Seishi again with Tiffin Box. We're with Eric Foley, a Connecticut wedding and event photographer. Uh, he's also become a very good friend of mine in the last few uh, years now. And uh, you know, uh, Eric and I met each other again um, back in uh, was it was it February? When was it? when was Inspire Boston? I don't know. I have two kids, man. I don't remember yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have that also in common. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's let's begin now. I think the, the thing that really uh, I took away from your uh, presentation at Inspire Boston uh, was how important it was to be prepared to go pro as a Absolutely. photographer. Um, I think a lot of people have the idea that they can walk into a camera store, buy camera gear from B and H or Adorama, both great places, by the way. But they can come back and say them call themselves a photographer. Um, you mean you can't do that? <laughs> uh, I don't think you can. But you know what? <laughs> you had you had about six or seven points that we should probably discuss um, right off the bat that would may have helped to other photographers who are considering going pro, but may have not considered you know what you've just uh, presented at Inspire Boston. Sure, absolutely. Well, the uh, really quick background. I worked with the state, you know, as a chef for five years, uh, basically four years while I was building my business. So one of the biggest things that I had going for me was that I had a full-time job and I was still doing photography full-time in a sense, because if you do more than 10 or 15 weddings in a year, you're pretty much full-time. Sure. Uh, so I was able to sink every ounce or every penny I should say um, and every dollar back into my business because I was fortunate enough to have a state job that was sort of paying the bills and I was in, all in the meantime building my business for what it, it is today. Uh, one of the big things like you said is people don't necessarily prepare for that uh, transition and they don't really see the other side of it and there's really not a lot of people talking about how to do it in a sense or the transition. It's one thing if you're starting from scratch and you don't have something, uh, you know, as a start and you're just saying, hey, today I'm going to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to say that, well, I have a career in something completely different that I want to change and go into professional photography full time. Sure. I was a chef and I went to Johnson & Wales and I'm still paying uh, student loans on a, being a chef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know how to cook and that's great. but. Um, you know, I'm not chefing anymore, so I'm a photographer, but a few of the, the most important things right off the bat, obviously, one thing is money. Um, you know, I hate to start off with that, but in today's economy, the way it is, you have to be prepared monetarily, financially. You know, if you do not set yourself up, you, you're, you're almost bound for failure. Um, you know, the, a few of the, the main points that we talked about in Boston, uh, some of them were sort of if you will, uh, bullet points on should you even get into this job full time? You know, is this the right career choice for you based on one which is personality? Uh, we talked about personality in a sense where some people may be great with a camera, um, you know, take great pictures, however people skills are not very good. Um, if you are somebody who is socially awkward or has a hard time uh, dealing with people, being a professional photographer full time may be a tough job for you because really you we all see it um, all around the country you know you don't have to have outstanding you know award-winning work to be a successful photographer I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing but it's really your brand is your personality so if you can get your personality out there and you can uh, sell yourself and your work together I think that's a big plus a lot of people don't think about that um, you know if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to be in social situations in public right. you know going full-time as a photographer I don't know might be tough um, the next thing that we talked about uh, was motivation obviously uh, this job is ever-changing and you have to stay motivated to you know to want to succeed as a full-time photographer um, for me leaving a, a full-time state job which you know as we all know it's like they always say it's the cushy job because you get the benefits you get the retirement you get all that stuff right um, everybody in my family thought I was crazy to do this uh, so the motivation that I used was my family you know I used my kids and my family to say that look you know 
it's sink or swim for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can't look at my kid's face and say that daddy can't pay the bills so we have to move out of our house. I don't want to do that, you know. So I use that motivation to really succeed and, and be successful in the business. Um, so motivation is a big thing. You have to find it from somewhere. If you're not a motivated person, again, this may be a tough job for you. Uh, the next thing that we went into was a support system. Uh, support system, I'll tell you, for me, hands down was my wife. Um, if you don't have somebody positive in your life that can really help pull you along when you're either getting nervous or, or getting scared about doing it or standing up to that edge, um, I think what I said in my talk was it's almost like standing at the top of a building and you're looking over the edge. Right. You know, you have two options to either step off the ledge or take the jump. And, uh, and our talk is actually making the jump going full time. Right. Uh, my wife was probably the sole source of pushing me over that edge, you know, besides my own uh, motivation, you know, but you know, she was there to support me to say, hey, it's going to be okay. So going full time, you definitely need to have positive people around you, you know, like yourself. Um, I have friends in the industry. You have to have those friends in the industry that are going to sort of, you know, crack the door open for you to say, hey, come on in. This is possible. You can do it, you know. Right. right. So that was a big thing, support system. Uh, going to the maybe more tangible side of going full time, um, big thing obviously industry knowledge. Um, like you said, a lot of people walk into these camera stores and they just say, "Hey, I've got a whatever camera they they buy. It's digital. It's got a it's got a a memory card. So I'm going to go pro." And uh, a lot of times, there's a lot of bumps in the road that they could sort of prevent if they just kind of slow down a little bit and maybe just take it one step at a time instead of jumping right in. I actually got a call today from a friend who um, I don't even know what she, I'm not sure what she does with her real job or her, I should say her, uh, her full-time job, but um, she told me somebody asked her to do a maternity session. She's only done one shoot before and it was just for a friend and she wants to charge this person. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, hold on, think about the liabilities, think about, you know, the insurance, think about what happens if something goes wrong, you know, you can't just go out there and do this um, and start, you know, I mean, you can, I mean, we all have to start somewhere, right. but do you have the knowledge to even go forward? What about after the shoot? What about, you know, uh, fulfilling the job? What about, you know, your reputation if something goes wrong? Um, so the industry knowledge really is a big thing because uh, you have to know you know, just having a camera, like you said, isn't enough. Uh, you know, one of the most important things going beyond the industry knowledge really is sitting down and writing a business plan. Uh, you know, obviously, you always hear, oh, you have to write a business plan. I think the first year that I started business, I didn't have a business plan. I didn't even know what it was. I think I looked it up online and said, you know, Google, how do you write a business plan? Hmm. And, uh, and pretty much, you know, there you have it. So my business plan changes probably every year just because the industry changes every year and uh, my goals change every year. So getting into the business going full time, you have to be flexible to know that, that hey, you may write your business plan today, but in 365 days from now, it's probably going to be different. You know, it's going to change. Our business plan changes probably every year we redo it. and. Um, you know, it goes from knowing your your market and your market strategies and your advertising, which is very important uh, because you have to know who you're selling to and where you are. Um, in our talk, we talked about the the counties or uh, the counties in Connecticut. You know, you have New Haven County, Hartford County, all these different counties. Mm -hmm. Each county has a different average of what people spend on their weddings. And uh, there's some counties like New Haven and Fairfield County that spend anywhere from 40000 and above average in a wedding. Sure. Then there's uh, counties like Tolland where the average wedding is about 17000 So you have to look at what your financial needs are, you know, and you have to say, uh, not saying that your business is going to be solely surrounded by your, the county that you're in, but, you know, I'm in Hartford County, so I look at my business and probably about... 70% of it is in Hartford County. So I know that Hartford County's average weddings last year were about 38,000 and the national average for photographers is roughly about 12%, 10 to 12% for the wedding uh, budget. 
Okay. So you gotta look at that and say, well, you know, if ten percent of a forty thousand dollar wedding is four thousand dollars, then okay, I need to do X amount of weddings if this is what I can expect. Sure. You know, and based on talent and experience, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so the business plan is definitely very important. Um, and then the last thing, which kind of goes back to some of the personal things, is just really the ability to overcome fear. Um, that kind of goes mixes in with that support system and that motivation and in uh, the personality, really. You know, because uh, you know, I, I remember it was July sixteenth, almost two years ago. Actually, this July sixteenth would be two years ago that I went full time and left my state job. And I remember walking into my boss's office and uh, I said, "I have something for you." And of course, I was really excited because I was at the end of my career with that place. I was going to go crazy, so I um, I handed him my my two week notice, and he looked at me and he's and he just said, "Stop messing with me." And I said, "No." I said, "This is real." I said, uh, "It's taken me about six months to come to this decision, but I finally got over the fear, and I'm doing it." And you know, being a full time state employee for twenty years, he thought I was crazy, like a lot of people, um, but. I felt so liberated at that point, uh, getting over that fear, getting that monkey off your back in a sense, you know, that the, the weight of the world off your shoulders. Right. And the very next day I had a shoot in uh, Brooklyn. I was standing on the Brooklyn Bridge photographing my clients and it was like 85 degrees. You had that beautiful wind, you know, coming right through and I, I just stopped and I had to take in the moment and I said, wow this is my full-time job I have just made the jump to do this and getting over that fear was just you know it was a revelation I really that feeling if I could bottle it up you know that just have that and just kind of sprinkle it on me every once in a while <laughs> but um, but yeah so you know like like you said in the beginning you know it, it's not just getting a camera walking into walking into being an agent saying hey uh, I want to be a full-time photographer it's so much more and you really if I could do it all over again one of the biggest things I would do is just make sure that I took as many business classes and marketing classes as I could before I get into the business because right now even even the state that our business is in which you know in my opinion is successful um, we're still playing catch up on the business and marketing end because you know I didn't really go to school for that right. and uh, you know you have workshops and and all these sorts of things that people put on and those are great mm -hmm. um, I always recommend going to a business and marketing workshop that doesn't have anything to do with photography perhaps you know get an outside perspective um, th that's one of the biggest things uh, the other thing obviously is have some money in the bank because your bank account can go from this <laughs> To this when you go full-time very quickly and uh, and to be honest we struggled that first year it wasn't easy and uh, come the slow season you know January February March we didn't have our payments set up right because we weren't thinking about being full-time the year before mm -hmm. and uh, and we almost you know we almost got in some trouble so we actually got out of it thankfully and we structured our payments around uh, covering those slow seasons and that's that's a really important thing when you start booking weddings and you're going full time you have to have money coming in in December January February right. and March right. oh, and if you don't um, and if I can just give a, a direct example uh, what we do for our payments is uh, we do uh, a third upfront you know to for the retainer non-refundable retainer and then the second third we, we split the balance in half so the second third uh, will then go six months prior to the wedding and then the remaining balance is due 30 days prior that saved us financially right. going full-time because what that did was those people getting married in June in July in August were now giving us payments in December January and February right. you know, so that was a big thing that's something that a lot of people sort of forget you know because in 2008 when we were booking those weddings right. for 2009 mm -hmm. it wasn't set up that way you know so let me let me ask you this. I think during the presentation in Boston, you mentioned a, a figure of twenty five thousand dollars to start off. Is that is that a, a fair assessment uh, from from your experience, or is it just a number that you figured would be 
ideal for everybody to have in the bank before they go pro? Yeah, we actually, um, we had somewhere between 25 and 30. And it was only because I had the state job and I was able to do that. And uh, even doing that, because of our payment structure, which we just spoke about, we almost got, you know, we almost drained that amount. Um, so I would say definitely, you know, if you're really serious about doing this, if it's a career change, I strongly suggest having, you know, 20, 25 easily. Mm -hmm. If you're just starting out and you're doing this from scratch, you can probably slowly build your business mm -hmm. um, because you probably have a little more time to do that. And, and again, it depends on the responsibilities that you have. Right. But when you're leaving a career and switching over and you have, you know, we bought a house we had a baby and we went full time all in the same year. Probably not the wow. smartest thing to do. <laughs> wow. Yeah, probably not the smartest thing to do. However, you know, that's how we are. We, we jump in with both feet and it's sink or swim. Yeah. Um, but I would strongly recommend if you're making a career change, you should have 20, 25,000 easily because, you know, if something goes wrong and, uh, you know, you get hurt or the bookings don't come in, you've got to have six months in the bank, mortgage insurance all that good stuff because hey you just never know and you know now in today's economy with layoffs and your significant other your spouse can get laid off mm -hmm. like that you know and um, you really just want to be set up for that let me ask you uh, perhaps the last question for this of this interview um, sure. you know there's a great number of photographers um, um, out in the world right now um, probably meaning very well but um, or dispensing all kinds of advice to uh, other new photographers um, and you know they may or may not have had a fairly successful career of, for themselves um, and it's a bit troubling to me um, to, to find photographers who haven't really you know I wouldn't want to say paid their dues but you know really have had a, a good run at either weddings or portraits or whatever before they can get out and um, dispense their advice to other photographers um, you've had you coming up on your second anniversary right um, yes since going pro um, mm -hmm. since going pro and full-time I should say um, yes what would well you no I've actually just to clarify I've sure. been um, in business for about seven years seven years okay yeah and, yep and it's been two years since I've been strictly just full -time. photography so it's so just full-time for, for, for two years now yep um, how many weddings are you consistently booking uh, in the last couple of years? Well, we are averaging, in the last three years, we're averaging 33 weddings a year. <laughs> um, we actually, to be exact, uh, in 2008, which I think was our biggest jump, we went from 11 weddings to 26. And then we haven't done less than 33 cents. Uh, this year we actually, I well, we were supposed to stop at 30 this year because I was feeling a little overworked last year, but we ended up with 37. Uh, next year we're probably going to hit those same numbers. Um, but I, I do agree that, uh, again, you know, everybody is an individual and in, in our industry perceived value, you know, is reality and, you know, you really just have to be careful about who you're investing your money and time into learning things from mm -hmm. um, you know I, I consider myself just really a husband and father and and photographer in that order and uh, you know I think you have to really there's a lot of people out there that have had a couple good years or maybe not even maybe they don't even do that many weddings but they've marketed themselves so you really have to just be cautious about you know who you're learning from um, you know I think it all depends on what level you're at too, as well in in what you're doing in your business and uh, in your your technical experience, uh, just being in in the business itself. Um, you know, I right now I'm at the point where you know I do look at people that I'm going to see and pay money to, and I say, well, you know, this person's only been in business for three years, and they're only doing about 15 weddings a year. Uh, you know, not saying that they can't teach me something, but you know, it goes. You know, it does go for saying that. Well, there may be somebody else, like well, let's just say Jerry Giannis, who I don't know, um, but somebody that 
I admire, and I went to see him, uh, last, I think, a year and a half, two years ago at Mystic, and I knew that that was somebody that had the credentials, that had the, the backbone in the business, had the experience, and I took away some really good marketing tips from him, Sure. Um, and you know, I knew it would be that kind of experience because of his reputation, you know, and that's what you really have to, uh, to research, you know, you have to say, look, what are other people saying about this? Um, what are the credentials of the people that are making these reviews and comments as well? You know, um, if everybody is saying that, you know, X photographer is great and he's amazing or she's amazing, but everybody that's saying that isn't full time or maybe has only been in business for a year, you might be precautious about that. You know, you just got to really, it's not saying that these you know people that are doing that can't teach you anything I've learned a lot of things I mean you can learn something from everybody you know mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what level you're at sure. um, but I would just say when money is tight and in time of course is money you really have to do your research and, and look at these people that you're going to see and invest in learning time you know because that that is important wonderful Eric thank you so much for your time and, well thank uh, you I appreciate it absolutely and uh, look forward to our next uh, lunch meetup <laughs> at the Indian restaurant or another restaurant hopefully next time well I don't know I like the Indian restaurant and I'm actually going to be on vacation next week so I am mentally checking out <laughs> Saturday morning um, Wonderful. yeah I'll be have a, a great trip to uh, yeah. Cape Cod and uh, say hello to the family absolutely thank you very much you do the same I thank appreciate you, it Eric.